Grant Chaps, is it true that the government is actively considering cutting inheritance tax? Well, you certainly have to wait for our, uh, a budget or uh, another event for the government to set out whatever their plans, uh, whatever the plans will be. I mean, I, look, generically, I'm in favour of all taxes being lower, but we've got to be fiscally responsibility, responsible. We can't do that and, until money's available to cut whichever tax you have. But, you're but there is mind. an active, there is the active conversation on this. Well, the Chancellor will always be looking at all the taxes. I, I'm afraid I can't really shed light on one specific tax over another one. If you're asking me, I'm a fiscal conservative. I like to see lower taxes, but we do Including have to be responsible. But I, okay. I, unfortunately, I just lost a parent and I, know, I can understand entirely why people find inheritance tax uh, particularly punitive. However, there are lots of different tax um, considerations for the Chancellor and we will have to wait for the Chancellor. Well, let, let's just for the moment focus on the principle of this one. Let me show you what Paul Johnson, who is, as you know, the boss of the mm. independent uh, forecast of the uh, in, uh, IFS. This is what he said. He said, I despair. There was speculation published the government's considering abolishing inheritance tax as a pre-election giveaway. If this has any basis in truth, one wonders what is the point of all the work done by the OBR which set out on Thursday in the starkest of terms severe fiscal challenges that face us. What is the question to which abolishing inheritance tax is any sort of plausible answer? What, what is the question to which it's an answer? Well, look, new newspapers spend their time having to fill the columns, right? And they write stories. Oh, and I, so, I, so... I, I, I think that's a bit unfair. They don't write them just because they make it up. Somebody tells them this well, is having a conversation. Well, uh, I mean... I, I could name many, many examples of stories which have actually... Okay, well, we don't do that this guy here. Uh, of but... course not. But nonetheless, you're taking it from a, from a story in the paper. Uh, look, it's right that every single tax is kept under consideration. I mean, I just mentioned, uh, I, I think, that inheritance tax is particularly punitive and unfair. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we also understand that we're in a fiscal straight jacket, uh, and the Chancellor said only last week that, uh, you know, mm. looking ahead to the, uh, to the autumn statement and the budgets, uh, that he doesn't see room for um, tax cuts. You, you, again, you're asking me about something for which decisions I, haven't I, been I, made I, I, and you'd expect those I, to be I, made properly that, by the but Chancellor. But there is a discussion to be had about this, and I think what most people, and this is what I guess Johnson was saying, are puzzled by, is why get into a tizzy about this one? It only affects... 4% of estates raises maybe 7 billion, mostly from very rich people. It is not going to fill the, ho the holes that the Chancellor's got to deal with, which are much bigger, and you're going to create a big political storm over something that's really quite small beer. Well, again, I'd point out what you're responding to here is newspaper speculation, not a government uh, announcement. Newspapers really are there in to Inspired speculate. by your colleagues. Well, well, there's certainly people who believe that it's an unfair tax. And I would point out this about uh, inheritance tax. You're right, not everyone um, pays it. I think it's a question for many people of, um, of aspiration. and People know that mm. there's something deeply unfair about being taxed all their lives and then being taxed in death as well. But as I say, there's no actual question on the table here because no decisions have been made about these fiscal right. questions and the Chancellor will do that in due time. All right, well, let, let me just uh, deal with another piece of speculation mm. which presumably comes out of nowhere, and no minister has actually said this to a journalist, that uh, you're talking about a potential real terms cut in benefits. No decision has been made, but would you personally be comfortable with that? Well, again, any government has to make the budget stack up, for sure. Secondly, I'd say that when it comes to things like the way that we treat people in the tax system, in particular, actually, going back to income uh, uh, tax. Uh, do, you, do you remember what the income tax threshold was when we came to power? Uh, you had to start paying income tax at £6,470. It's now nearly £12,500. That is a massive tax break, okay. which is aimed at people who are earning less. And so if you're asking where my heart is in this, it's always to ensure that people who, in particular people working, and people at okay. the, the lower end of that income scale are able to keep more of their cash. All right, well, let's talk about the other big story of the day. Um, the Prime Minister presented himself this week as a man determined to be honest with the public, long-term decision so that people and businesses can plan for a brighter future. Um, biggest long-term decision that you have in front of you, will HS2 run from Euston 
to Manchester. So H S two is a huge infrastructure project. I was uh, it's in a big charge with it for, for, for three and a half years. It's a huge. It's it, it, as you say, it's the biggest single one. I think probably in Europe. And there is always going to be, and there has always been, and rightly should be, a question of how you pace the development of that line. Um, there were decisions that I had to make at the time about it, particularly with reference to the eastern leg at that particular moment in time, and every government wants to take that under consideration. Again, it's not my area these days. There's no actual decisions made as yet. I'm seeing quite a lot of speculation about it. Actually, when you think about the size of the project and the amount of money that goes into that, as opposed to, you were just talking about welfare, for example, every government has to make that decision, and, and that's absolutely right. The point that Rishi... So, uh, so what you're saying is it's plausible, it's on the table, that you may need to cut the cost of this, and one way of doing that would be to run the line only as far as Acton and West London and only as far as Birmingham. It's one possibility. As I say, I think it's a question of sequencing, but to your wider point that you actually started off with, Rishi Sunak is the kind of Prime Minister who's prepared to take these difficult long-term decisions. Not always popular. We saw, and, we and saw for example... HS2 is one of those difficult decisions. Well, it's, it's, it's certainly it's difficult in terms of the, the, the pacing and the expectations, but you, we saw not just with HS2, but with our pace of change with net zero this week, that just because... The media says this must be done just because some people will say, uh, you know, these are the popular things to do. He's prepared to do the let's long-term not... <laughs> difficult things as well. Let, let, let's, not, let's not get all tied up with what media say and what they don't say. 80 business leaders have written to the Prime Minister because they, they certainly believe that this is possible. And here's what they say to the Prime Minister. It makes no sense for the country to build a high-speed railway from Birmingham to Ealing. Now, you can say it's speculation, but here's the practical point. Mm. All of these people who have already sunk money into projects, expanding headquarters into Manchester and so on, on the government's say-so that this is going to happen, believed that it was going to happen, and now don't think it will. And every answer that you give that doesn't give them reassurance costs money. So, is it going to run from central London to Manchester or not? Oh, forgive me, I'm not the Transport Secretary. Those are decisions that the but Transport it is a Secretary... Decision that, and it the is a decision Secretary. under active consideration. Well, as, as, far as, 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 as I say, it's a question of how you pace these things. And it's all very well to take an absolutist mm -hmm. line and say, unless you do this thing tomorrow, you know, commit fully to all of this whatever the project is, in this case, a very expensive railway line. But you can, say, you can say that in isolation. What about the other issues that you raise? Those issues of okay. uh, the defence budget, for example, or we're gonna come those to issues all, of... We're the, going to come to the wider but, but, thing. But the, but the wider point I'm trying to make but, is money is not infinite. We're going to come to that wider to... thing. But, but I want to stick with business, business leaders, because mm. these people have put real money into the ground. And look, here's the next thing that they say, the same letter... Over the last two decades, we've had repeated promises of infrastructure investment made to cities, including Manchester, Glasgow, Leeds, Sheffield and London. As business leaders, we have invested in our industries yeah. on the back of those promises. Now, you were the business minister, uh, secretary. You were the transport secretary. I'm assuming that some of those promises would have been made by you. And what these people are saying is, you told us it's going to happen. Now you're uncertain about whether it's going to happen, we have spent the money. Did you personally encourage people to invest on the basis that HS2 would run from central London to Manchester? Well, so actually, we've already spent £33 no, no. billion. Did pounds. you encourage businesses, yeah, but London we... to Manchester, me... did you encourage them to spend on that basis. I do want to see better infrastructure. And I, the point I'm trying yeah, to make, no, you've got to let me finish the sentence, otherwise, no, you're, otherwise your audience you're, you're won't asking, know the point you're I'm trying to make. You're, you're answering a different question. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you, when you talk to business yes. leaders, as Transport Secretary, as Business Secretary, mm -hmm. did you say to them, look, it's worth investing in the North in this way because there will be HS2? Did you say I, that? I, I hope you'll let me get my answer out. Um, I certainly. I, said, I want you to an answer to that question, not to another question. I certainly you said want. to them, this government is committed to improving uh, rail infrastructure, and in particular in the north, and we spent £33 billion, pounds, a record uh, amount since 2010, on rail infrastructure in the north. I've also said, I believe in greater connectivity. You've also got to realise that in that time, coronavirus happened. 
people stopped travelling entirely for a while and haven't gone back to the normal patterns of travel. Any government that doesn't then look at their plans and resequence them is, I'm afraid, acting outside of the reality of the situation. And it goes back to the point that the Prime Minister was making. He's prepared to take the difficult decisions, not always the popular decisions at that moment in time, but the right decisions long term for this country. Well, that's okay. You're now explaining to me why you might take the decision that uh, you say is just speculation. Would you like simply to say to these people who are, let me tell you, because I've spoken to a couple of them, are furious with you, would you like to apologise to them for saying to them, spend your money, we'll make sure the link is there, and now you're in a position where this morning, they're watching this programme, and they're none the wiser about whether they have spent their shareholders' money unwisely or not. Well, to point out you're actually asking me about a, a speculative story in the newspaper rather than an actual government policy, you will have to wait for more on sequencing. But my sequencing. point is... No, but, um, but the, the, we don't have the government policy. People who are, ha, have to make investment decisions mm -hmm. need to know what you're going to do. Right. The simple answer is we will always invest in the infrastructure of this country, and as has been our record. It's not just HS2 but also the £33 billion that I talked about and the integrated rail plan, which, out, without digging into too much of the detail, is about rail from the Midlands up into uh, the north and is the biggest ever plan that we've seen. So we, we are investing that money. So the first thing I'd say to those business people is we are, have already been and we already in t continue to spend that money regardless of the sequencing of Not exactly how... Not the way they thought you were going to spend people. it because of what you told them. Well, because country has to respond to the circumstances. We did not know there would be coronavirus, a one in 100 year event that cost the country tens, hundreds of billions, <laughs> about 400 billion pounds. We didn't know there'd be a war on in Europe, something that I hope we can talk about in uh, my role as defense secretary. Yeah. And the costs to the country of uh, that war and supporting the effort and preventing okay. the tyrant coming across Europe. So of course, the circumstance changes. You have to look at the sequencing of the big infrastructure cash that you spend. Any government that doesn't do that, any opposition who claims you don't need to, uh, is not fit to govern this country. All right, let me, let me put to you the words of somebody that I think you ought to pay some attention to, which is your former boss, Boris Johnson, who says on this topic, it makes no sense at all to deliver a mutilated HS2, the height of insanity, to announce all this just before a party conference in Manchester. Now, He's the guy who, when he's your boss, basically said this is going to happen, and he said it after coronavirus. Is he just completely out of his head here? Well, for a start, we, we haven't had an announcement. I keep going back to the fact that you are asking me about a bunch of newspaper speculation rather than an actual announcement. But it is the case, but it is the case, I don't want to sort of fudge this, it is the case that all of these big decisions, where budgets are, in particular in the case of HS2, inexorably going higher and higher and higher, and your viewers are having to pay that bill, it's absolutely right that a government looks at it and says, hold on a minute, is this just a sort of open-ended check, or are we going to make sure that this project uh, gets delivered uh, to a pace and a timetable that actually works for the taxpayer? It, it, it sounds like you're making the case, if I may say so, for resequencing, which is perfectly reasonable, but I think the point is people want to know. Uh, when will we have an announcement? Well, in, in, in due course, as I'm not the Transport Secretary, so I, 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 I'm, afraid, I'm, I'm afraid because we're talking about a story which is All speculation, right. I can't tell you exactly. Uh, but what I can say uh, is that, you know, we take those long-term decisions seriously, but we don't think that any amount of money, no matter how big the budget gets, you should just carry on ploughing it in. There has to be a point at which you say, hold on a minute, let's just take a break here. OK, you say long-term decisions, but uh, I'll make one last try on this. The people who wrote to the Prime Minister would say, you talk about long-term decisions, but the long-term seems to get shorter and shorter, and you can't even stick to the ones that you made a couple of years ago when you were Business and Transport Secretary uh, previous, previous to that. So where is this long-term well, thinking? Well, again, um, just... Uh, at risk of repeating myself, no one knew that coronavirus would stop okay. people from right. travelling we've, we've in a way, in a way which is fundamental uh, to our transport network. It's not just a sideshow. Okay. People repeat... stop going to work every day. Okay, I, I, I won't repeat the question if you don't. So, repeat... you know, the, think things yeah. have changed. If you don't stop and reflect okay. after things have changed, that is a foolish approach. All right.
you're 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 going to bin HS2 essentially. That's that's what I'm getting from this. And we start this conversation talking about the Prime Minister's pledge to be honest about long-term decisions. Um, you haven't told me really what you'd do about inheritance tax, long-term decision. You can't tell me what's going to happen about HS2. If I had time to ask about triple lock on pensions, I don't suppose you'd say anything about that. The viewer might be forgiven for thinking that in spite of all the talk about long-term decisions of being honest about these uh, issues, you aren't being honest because you don't actually have a long-term plan. Well, for forgive me, Trevor, Trevor. I think your viewers understand that I'm not here today to deliver the budget on your excellent programme. I'm here to talk about actually things that I can inform you about, which is, for example, in my uh, okay. role as Defence Secretary, uh, our work in Ukraine, uh, our attitude towards defending this country and many other things. You are asking about a bunch of things outside right. of my portfolio area and I'm trying to tell you that no decisions have been made and I understand that you're okay. pushing me to make those decisions. I can't because they haven't been made yet. All right. Uh it's difficult to escape the suspicion that long term for you is not 10 years or 20 years. It is January 2025 when there's the next election. That's what this is all about. I disagree actually fundamentally with that because if you were asking... You, you've pointed out a bunch of things to me this morning okay. that you say are unpopular. Uh, and you've, 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 okay. you've shown letters to, to, to prove your point. My point is we are prepared to take those difficult long term oh. decisions even when they are unpopular if they are in the long-term interests of this country. All right. Just very briefly, I did want to give you a chance to say uh, something about Ukraine. Is there Ukraine fit fatigue creeping into the West? Well, I think, um, you know, we're 19 months into this now. Um, on Tuesday, I was out in, in Ramstein in, in Germany meeting with 50 countries who are all supporting Ukraine. This is NATO plus a bunch of other nations. Uh, and certainly within that room, uh, we were all absolutely solidly behind Ukraine. And I'll say this, I think the UK stands shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine. We haven't forgotten how a tyrant has walked in to his democratic neighbour. Uh, and if we don't stop him, we know from history what happens after that. And that is why uh, we are continuing our support. I've just announced tens of thousands of additional rounds of ammunition, uh, taking us up to about 300,000 rounds so far. And we provided a huge amount of additional support and equipment. By the end of this year, uh, our goal is to have trained 30,000 Ukrainian troops. So I don't think the British resolve uh, is wavering in any way, shape or form, and we will stand shoulder to shoulder with the Ukrainians. Right, thank you very much. Thank you.